And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week as we go to game number two of this best of three series from Richard Bell Field. And Cartersville, the visiting team in game number two, and they will face off against Russ Crum, who's now come into pitch, and he misses first pitch outside to Matt Hightower. 1-0 and as the lights have come on here at Richard Bell Field. And clouds have come over the area. What was a beautiful day to start game one is turned a little sour, and there's a called strike, one and one. Scott Keynes are one victory away, obviously, here in this series from going back to the state championship series for a third straight year. The stretch and the pitch by Crum. That ball misses inside, two and one to Matt Hightower. They appeal down the third baseline, and the third base umpire said he did not come around. So now Hightower steps back in, hitting from the left side of the box against Russ Crum. Crum with the stretch, the pitch. That one in there for a called strike, two and two. The defense is the same here in game number two for the visiting Panthers. Or they are the home team here in game two. The stretch and the pitch by Crum. That ball swung on and fouled back. And Hightower's going to run down the line, and he's safe. So Cartersville takes advantage of a Perry mistake to start the game, and now Russ Mitchell comes to the plate. Yeah, you said it's got a break there for the Canes. Hightower swung at a high fastball, came up empty, but the catcher that time, Tyler Lawhorn, unable to squeeze it, so Hightower on it first. So far, Scott, we've seen Cartersville take a 1-0 lead, and now this is their fourth playoff series in the previous three series. In game two, they have scored in the first inning, really jumped on the other team, and that's very demoralizing for a team. If you're already trailing 1-0 in the series, and before you even get to come to bat in the second game, you're already trailing on the scoreboard. See if Cartersville can keep that streak alive. So Russ Mitchell steps in, the first pitch hits him, or doesn't hit him, just comes right around him and misses him, 1-0. Thought it did hit him too. Looks like it squared up to him. But Mitchell steps back in, broke pretty good, and they throw on back to first where the runner is safe as Hightower goes back to the bag. Setting the rest of the Perry defense, Tyler Lawhorn again behind the plate, Doug Yarborough at first, Kyle McCarty at second, Chris Fry is at short, and Matt Hunt, the pitcher from game one, has now moved to third base. I'll tell you about the outfield in just a second. Again, Crum with the stretch and the pitch. That one in there for a call and strike a one and one to Russ Mitchell. The outfield for the Panthers, Mitchell Fowler out in left field, TJ Hudgens in center field, and Brad Woodard is over in right field. As Russ Mitchell steps back in, the count even at one, and no one out and a runner aboard for the Canes. They throw on back to first again where Hightower is safe. Crum is definitely aware of Hightower over there. Lead off man on for the Canes. Hightower was 0 for 3 in that first game. He did walk. So he has been on base, but really hasn't been able to show that speed he has thus far today. The pitch to Mitchell. That ball fouled back to the stop, a one and two. Pretty good off-speed pitch that time from Crum, and he's ahead of Russ. The Hurricane lineup, the same as usual. Matt Hightower leads it off. He's followed by Russ Mitchell and Josh Morris. Matt Price hits in the four spot. Zach Kiesler comes next. Zach Hardy hits in the sixth spot. Then comes Kyle Williams and Jason Ritchie. Alan Barnes will come into DH for Travis Henderson. And actually, he'll hit for Adam McGowan, who comes into play second this game. The pitch, that one in there for called strike three, and he gets him looking. So Russ Mitchell goes down on strikes, and that brings Josh Morris to the plate with one out here in the top of the first. No score here in game number two of this best of three series. Hurricanes will be chasing their 28th consecutive postseason win and a chance to punch their ticket back to the state finals for the third consecutive year. Yeah, that pitch in there for a called strike to Josh Morris. Right now, Scott, Russ Crum, the pitcher, is off to a great start, throwing that fastball on the outside part of the plate, locating it extremely well. He struck out the first two Hurricane hitters. Josh Morris steps back in, and now they throw on back to the mag. Crum heads back up on the hill. No one count now to Josh Morris, and... Morris, who had a successful first game, going two for three, steps back in. The pitch, that one in there for a called strike, 0-2. And, and the strike zone really goes deep over the far side of the plate. Morris steps back in. The 0-2 pitch, that one misses away, 1-2. and two. Yeah, that time the catcher, Lawhorn, set up way outside. Perry Crowd wanted that call strike, but... 
was well out. Morris is still alive with a one-two count. Morris steps back in. Crum again goes back to the bag, and again, Hightower is safe. Been impressed with Crum's fastball thus far, as well as his off-speed. Throwing it for strikes and keeping the first three hitters off balance here. Morris steps back in. The pitch by Crum. That ball swung on, taken deep to left field. It's going back toward the fence, and that ball is gone. A two-run shot for Josh Morris, and the Hurricanes take an early 2-0 lead here in game number two. Well, there's the first mistake by Crum after I complimented him. He just leaves that fastball out of the plate for Morris, and you can't do that against Josh. Not a whole lot of movement on that pitch, and Josh Morris hits a moon shot. That one almost brought rain. And Cardinals on top two to nothing, Scott. So four straight playoff series that Cardinals going to score in that first inning of game two when they're already leading the series. That's a big two runs for Cartersville. And I would bet that 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 goes back further than you think. That may go Probably. back for a while. I'd go look that one up. The pitch. That one misses outside one and zero to Matt Price. So Russ Crum, who's already been lit up by Josh Morris here in what was a absolute bomb over the left field fence, steps back up to face Matt Price, and he's in there for a call strike that time, one and one. Price had a big first game, Scott. One for one with a home run. As we watch that pitch miss away. That'll peel to first. Now he's going to say he swung. Kind of surprising call there, but. Matt reached base all three times. He came to the plate in the first game. He scored twice. He had two RBIs, and like I said, that home run, which proved to be the winning margin for the Canes, hit a two-run shot. Canes won the game 5-3. to three. Well, Matt Price steps back in. Again, Russ Crum on the hill. The pitch. Sewing and a miss that time, and Price goes down on strikes. Second strikeout of the inning for Russ Crum, and that now brings Zach Kiesler to the plate. Another deadly hitter in the Hurricane Arsenal. Kiesler went long in game number one. Break the game open early. Kiesler left the park in the first inning, a three-run shot. Give Cartersville a commanding lead early. The pitch, that one in there for a call. Strike 0-1 to Zach Kiesler. Kiesler got a good look at the all-speed pitch from Crum. Now he steps back in. Crum again with the sign and the pitch. That one misses outside, 1-1 one one to Kiesler. Kiesler steps out of the box, looks down the line, and now steps back in. The stretch, the pitch. That one high and away. Two and one now to Zach Kiesler. Kiesler gets on board. It would be Zach Hardy up next for the Canes here in the top of the first. They lead this one 2 nothing. You're listening to WBHF AM 1450 and watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. The pitch, that one misses and goes back to the stop. Three and one now. Zach Hardy would hit next. Canes are going to send Russ Mitchell to the hill here in game two. After Matt Hightower got the win in game one, so a little different pitching combination Hurricanes electing to use here in the semifinal series. Russ Mitchell worked three and a half innings last Thursday against Westside Augusta, getting the victory in game one of that best of three series. The pitch swung on that ball, tattooed into center field. It's down for a base hit, and Kiesler's the board. Zach did a good job that time. Stay back on the all-speed pitch, and as you said, Sky hit it pretty hard. Right back up the box in the center field, and he's on with the second Cartersville hit of the inning. And that brings up the catcher, Zach Hardy. So Hardy now steps in with two down here in the top half of the first inning. Hurricanes leading it two to nothing. You're listening to WBHF, and you're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. I'm Scott Singer along with Kyle Tucker. And Hardy steps in, the pitch, that one in there for a called strike, going one. Hardy one for two in that first game. Had a single, also walked. That pitch swung on, hit down to short. Coming on to make the play that time was Fry. He can't handle it. It'll go E6, and Cartersville has two base runners. Well, it looked like Crumb's going to be able to get out of this inning with no further damage. Now he's in danger of allowing Cartersville to score some more runs. Patrick Chesley once again going to come in and run for Hardy as a courtesy runner. So Kiesler goes down to second, and Scott said on the air, and Chesley the runner at first, Kyle Williams the batter. 
second error of the inning against the Perry defense, and now Kyle Williams will step in. Williams steps in now to face Russ Crum. The pitch swung on, and that ball popped up to third. Matt Hunt camping underneath it, and he makes the final out of the inning. But the Hurricanes do get it done here in the first off Two hits, two errors, they score two and leave two. We move to the bottom half of the first. It's Cartersville two, Perry nothing. I'm throwing it out. And welcome back to Richard Bellfield. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week, and now you're listening to WBHF AM 1450. I'm Scott Singer along with Kyle Tucker. As we move to the bottom half of the first, Russ Mitchell on the hill for the Hurricanes, and he will have the honors against the Perry lineup. Leading things off for the visiting Panthers is Kyle McCarty. He'll be followed by TJ Hudgens and then Chris Fry. The Panthers coming into this game are now 25 and 8. And they are in a do or die situation tonight. They have two more with the Canes, and they got to win both in order to, to advance on. They lose one, and their season's over. The pitch, that ball swung on, hit back into the infield. Coming on to make the play is McGowan. He grabs it, and not in time. It'll be an infield single. Come on, TJ, hit it off. Well, good start for Perry. Party. He gets on base. That's what it gets between the bat. Let's go. Perry Panthers are down two. On, They're in an elimination go, game here. If they don't win, like you said, Scott, they are out of the state baseball tournament. So T.J. Hudgens now steps in, the center fielder, to face Russ Mitchell. The pitch, that one in there for a called strike, 0 and 1. Hudgens 1 for 2 in game 1, had a single. Leading off the inning was Kyle McCarty with an infield single. First hit of the game for the Panthers. Russ Mitchell delivers to the plate, and that ball's popped up and be out of play. It's going to be 0-2 to T.J. Hudgens, the center fielder. Mitchell moves from shortstop to the mound. Kyle Williams goes from second base over to shortstop. Adam McGowan comes in to play second. He replaces Travis Henderson defensively. Jason Ritchie goes from right field to left, and Matt Hightower goes from the mound to right field. 0-2 pitch is once again fouled out of play. Find a hole out there, T.J., let's go. Matt Price at first for Cartersville and Kiesler at third. Zach Hardy behind the plate and Josh Moore scores the center fielder. Quick throw Russ to first. Mitchell throws Got back it. to the bag and he gets the runner. What an excellent play defensively by the Canes. And that is the third Panther runner to be thrown out on the baseline today. And now we're going to have some more mouthing from a Perry player. McCarty has some words to say for the first base umpire. And now the first base coach has something to say, and the first base umpire tells him to get back into the coaching box, and the first base coach will do just that. Now we're going to have a little hold up as the runner McCarty will talk to his coach. All right, so he felt he got back to the bag. That was a pretty good move by Mitchell, very quick. For a right-hander, Mitchell has an exceptional move. Right here, Brooks, Scott. This is guts out there. First base ump has warned someone. I don't know if it was the third base coach. What was the third base coach? Appreciate the help from our spotter, my dad, Johnny Tucker, helping us out in the booth today. In there for a called strike three, and he gets him looking there. So that brings Chris Fry to the plate with two down here in the bottom half of the first inning. It looked like it could be a promising inning for Perry Scott as all of a sudden – Cloudy like the weather. Strike out, and there's now two outs, no one on. The pitch by Mitchell misses inside, a 1-0 now to Chris Fry. And just because you have base runners against this Cartersville team does not mean they're going to stay there. They're just as happy to pick you off as they are to get you out at the plate. There's one that fouls back to the fence, 1-1. One and one. Yeah, that's three guys they've thrown out, two on the pickoffs, and, of course, the, I guess, the rundown situation on the caught stealing, I guess is what you'll officially call it. It's a huge momentum move when it happens as well. So Chris Fry steps back in with the count even at one. Russ Mitchell with the pitch. A swing and a miss that time, one and two. 
Fry was 0 for 2 in the first game. He grounded into a double play. He reached on an error as well. Mitchell back up on the hill. The stretch, the pitch. That one hit into the infield. Matt Price comes on to make the play. He throws on to Mitchell. He tags the bag, and that'll do it as the Panthers get a hit. He gets thrown out. The rest of them go in order. We move to the top of the second. It's Cartersville 2, Perry nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. I'd like to thank our television sponsors for today's game, Century Bank, U.S. Industrial Supply, Parmenter, Lankford & Watkins Insurance, and the Bartow County Animal Hospital, as well as Bartow County Bank. And they are all the ones that make this broadcast possible to be seen on television. All of our radio sponsors are the same five I just mentioned, plus the Capri Restaurant and the Village Porch Cafe. And I think the Booth Western Art Museum is also a sponsor of today's game. If they're not, <laughs> you got a plug. You got a plug anyway. Should be amazing when it opens this summer. The stretch in the pitch to Jason Ritchie, and he fouls it back to the stop, 0-1. Good cut by Ritchie. He was pitched away the whole first game, pitched away here by Crum in the first pitch. And Jason took a pretty good hack there. Good to see him get a piece. Hopefully, Jason's luck will start changing at the plate. Jason steps in. The stretch and the pitch by Russ Crum, and that ball swung on and fouled down the first baseline, 0 and 2. So, after two fastballs, Richie may be able to look for an off speed pitch here. Now Richie steps in. Crum with the stretch. And the pitch, that ball in the dirt, one and two now to, to Jason Ritchie. Catcher that time, Tyler Lawhorn was ready to throw the ball down to his third baseman, Matt Hunt. When the home plate umpire did not signal a called strike three. Ritchie steps back in. Crum with the delivery. That one way off the mark and gets away from the catcher. Two and two. So good at bat here by Ritchie, he's falling behind. Fell behind, excuse me, 0-2, and is now work it back even at 2-2. Two and two. Richie now steps in. The count even at 2. Crum with the pitch. That one high and away. Full count. And if Richie were to get aboard, you'd have Alan Barnes, the DH, warming up. And then the top of the order. Well, you're going to have that anyway, but right. you'd have it with runners on. Runners on. The pitch. Swung on that ball, hit down the third baseline. It's fair, a great hit ball that time by Jason Ritchie. And that ball's going to go. It's going to go all the way toward the fence. Ritchie rounds first. He's in with a stand-up double. And the Hurricanes now have a runner in scoring position for Allen Barnes. I'm so happy to see that happen for Jason Ritchie. He's hit the ball so well throughout these playoffs and hasn't had a whole lot to show for it. And now it might not have been the hardest ball he's ever hit, but like you said, it's got hit hard enough and well enough down that third baseline. Easily a fair ball, and he strolls in with a stand-up double. And the Canes are in business here in the top of the second. Well, that brings Allen Barnes in, Kyle. And, well, Barnes led off the season as good as anybody can. Two for two with two home runs. We'll see what he can do here. That pitch misses away, 1-0 and now to Barnes. That one was high and wide. We'll see what he does now as he steps back in. Well, he told me between games he's going to hit a home run, so we'll see if he proves to be prophetic. A swing and a miss that time by Barnes, and that was his swing right there, one and one. He tried to on that one. <laughs> Took a hack. Alan Barnes steps back in. Again, Jason Ritchie on second is great, too, because it takes the double play ball away. The pitch. That ball in the dirt. And a called strike, one and two. I say he went around. Kane's looking for some production out of their nine spot. Just got a double from the eighth hitter in Ritchie. Allen Barnes steps back in. The one-two pitch on the way, and that one misses outside. Two and two now to Allen Barnes. Close pitch, but it was a good call by the home plate umpire. That was a ball. A big at bat here. If the Canes can get Barnes on base, they would then bring the top of the order in with no outs. Crum with the pitch. That ball in the dirt. Full count now to Allen Barnes. Good at bat by Barnes. He was behind one and two and has looked at two pretty good pitches. Count's now full. Barnes steps back in. 
Again, Crum on the hill with the pitch. Swung on, that ball taken into left field. A high floater they're calling for it, and the left fielder will take it. Coming on to make the play was Mitchell Fowler. And it's the first down of the inning for the Hurricanes. Allen just missed that one. Made some pretty solid contact on one, just got a little bit under it. And Fowler easily made the catch. And now Matt Hightower, who struck out his first time, but reached on the pass ball. I know would like to make up for that first plate appearance. Well, Matt Hightower steps in with one out. Runner aboard on second is Jason Ritchie. The pitch. Swung on that ball, ripped toward right field, going back toward the fence. Good night. A two-run blast into the tree line for Matt Hightower, and the Hurricanes are tacking it on. It's four to nothing. Well, we'll gladly take that one there, Matt, here in game two, but if he could have done that in the game one, it would have kept our pitchers hitting home run streak alive, but that's okay. We'll take that four-run lead here in game two. That's a big home run for the Hurricanes, and all the momentum is on their side right now. And Kyle, the Canes continue to do it with the long ball. Yes, they do. That's the second one here in this game, and I believe the fifth overall today in this series against Perry. All their scoring coming by way of the long ball. In both games. Yep. So now Russ Mitchell steps in with one out and a 4-0 lead. Base is cleared. The pitch by Crum. That ball swung on. Hit down the third baseline. Coming on to make the play is Matt Hunt. He throws on to first in time, and Mitchell is out. And now Josh Morris comes to the plate with two outs. I was wrong, Scott. It's actually the fourth home run hit by Cartersville today. There was a three-run shot and a two-run shot hit back in game one. I was thinking it was two two-run shots in a solo. But still, all five runs scored on the long ball in the right. first game, and now all four in the second game scored here in the same situation that we saw against West Side Augusta in game two. That one about got you, Scott. all the way back to the stop. <laughs> came right at me. <laughs> Thank goodness for that net and that wall or a singer would have been ducking <laughs> out of that one. <laughs> wow, that's the first ball I've seen fly to the backstop. Four to nothing your score right now. Cartersville on top of this one. Again, top half of the second. Two two-run shots for the Canes as Josh Morris steps in with two outs. That way upstairs just misses him, 2-0. And you got to be wondering if Russ Crum might be a little rattled. Yeah, he is uh, Perry's ace, we have been told. And throw your ace out there in a game you have to win and be down four to nothing in the second inning is not a good thing. The pitch, a swing and a miss that time by Josh Morris. The count goes to two and one. Morris was trying to hit one where he hit back in the first inning. He's trying to hit that one back to those little league fields over there, Rudy York Field. Josh Morris steps back in. 2-1 pitch on the way, and that one misses outside. 3-1 and one now to Morris. He gets aboard. Matt Price would be up next for the Canes. They're going to be very caref careful here to Morris. 3-1 and one's the count. Your team's already trailing by four. No reason to make it five by throwing him a fastball. The pitch. Swung on that ball, ripped down the third baseline. It's fair. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Morris is going to turn the corner at first. He's going to second. He'll be in with a stand-up double in the Hurricanes. Have a runner in scoring position now for Matt Price. Well, the Perry Panthers are going to have nightmares of Josh Morris in their sleep tonight. He is tearing them up here in this series. He's now five for six. He has two two singles, a double, and a home run. Just a triple Actually, shy of the cycle here for the day. That's four for five, not adding right. Five at bats, four hits. Yeah, needs a triple for the, to get the cycle for the series. Matt Price steps in with a runner in scoring position, and that one in there for a called strike, 0-1. And, and every hit that Morris had, has has been absolutely tattooed. Matt Price steps back in. Again, Russ Crum on the hill, way inside, and he hits him, so. And they're going to hit Price, but they're, not gonna, they're going to say that he didn't try and get out of the way. So it's probably yeah, just going to be that's a, ball. a That's a tough call right there because he hit him outside, and wh where's, where's your batter going to go? Because yeah. if he steps on the plate, he's out. Yep. He, he did what your coach would do, turn away, and he did just that. And now some of the Perry fans that 
It's pressing. They're feeling towards the home plate umpire. No real reason to do that, though. But you can understand their frustration watching their team trail by four. Already down a game in the series. Down big here in game two. Kane's threatening to add more. Cartersville playing on their home diamond tonight. Kane's already with five hits here. We're still batting in the second inning. The pitch. That one misses outside. Two and one. So big Matt Price will step back in. Matt had a home run back in the first game. This pitch is hit into left field. On comes Fowler, makes a nice running grab to end the inning for Cartersville. We'll go to the bottom of the second. The Canes plate two on a home run by Matt Hightower. After one and a half, it's Cartersville four, Perry nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bellfield. You're watching the High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. Game two of a best of three series here between Cartersville and Perry. Hurricanes won the first game five to three. They lead here in game two, four to nothing. For Perry here in the second, they're gonna send up their four, five, and six hitters in Russ Crum, Matt Hunt, and Tyler Lawhorn. Russ Mitchell has completed his warm-up tosses and is ready to go for the Canes here in the bottom of the second. A two-run homer by Josh Morrison, a two-run homer from Matt Hightower, the scoring here in game two. Mitchell's first pitch is hit out in front of the plate. Mitchell calls off Hardy, bare hands it, makes a nice throw to first for the first out here in the second. So a good defensive play by Russ Mitchell. Gets off that mound nicely, and Perry quickly has one out here. That brings up Matt Hunt, the third baseman. He was the losing pitcher in game one. And he has now moved to third base. Mitchell's first pitch misses. And he'll deliver the 1-0 pitch to Hunt. That ball is laced into left field and it will bounce in front of Jason Ritchie. So a single for Perry, that's their second hit of the day off Mitchell. And now you've already faced the heart of the lineup here, now you can start working on, on the next guys that are coming up. But really, Crum and Hunt are the only two that have done any damage today. So if Mitchell can take care of the bottom half of the order here, you won't see them for another couple innings. Mitchell's first pitch misses high and in on the fastball to Tyler Lawhorn, the catcher for Perry. The Panthers need some runs. Try and get back in this one. They already trail by four in the bottom of the second. Lawhorn steps back in. 1-0 pitch on the way and a swing and a miss that time. It goes even at one. Mitchell again back up on the hill as Lawhorn steps back in. Mitchell throws back to the bag and the runner is safe. One and one the count. A one out here in the bottom half of the second inning. Kane's leading it four to nothing here in game number two and that's just a little dribbler back to the pitcher. They try to turn two. They throw on in time and the Canes do it. That one goes one, six, three and they're out of the jam quickly. We move to the top of the third. It's Cartersville four, Perry nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bellfield. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week as we move to the top half of the third and the Hurricane Bats will come to the plate. Leading things off for the Canes will be Zach Kiesler. He'll be followed by Zach Hardy and Kyle Williams as the five, six, and seven hitters come to the plate. Canes looking to get a little insurance here with a commanding four nothing lead so far and a monster defensive play in the bottom half of the second as Russ Mitchell turns the one, six, three double play and the Canes were out of the jam quickly. 
Perry needing to get Silence the Hurricane Bats to have hit home runs in the first and second inning for their four scores. And the weather doesn't look like it'll be a factor, but it's starting to get a little overcast and windy out there. And the wind starting to blow out a little bit more than it was. It was blowing almost directly in at the beginning of game one, and now it's starting to push out a little bit toward right center field. The dimensions here at Richard Bell Field are 331 down the lines, 355 to the power alleys, and 385 to straightaway center. Stepping to the plate now is Zach Kiesler to face Russ Crum. The first pitch. That one in there for a called strike, 0-1. So Zach Kiesler steps back in. Crum back up on the hill. The 0-1 pitch on the way. That one in the dirt. He went around, though, and a called strike going two. Perry players looking very dejected here in game number two. Yep. I had a little charge in him at the beginning of the game, but that was quickly put to rest with two big home runs. Kiesler steps in. The pitch. That one in there for called strike three, and he gets him looking. Yeah, Zach knew that one. Watched a pretty good pitch there on 0-2. So that brings Zach Hardy to the plate, Kyle. He's 0 for 1 today, reached base on an error back in the first. I wonder if the Canes are going to hit one of those lulls that they usually do. They always score, it seems, at the early parts of the game and in the latter stages, but it's those middle innings where they have a tough time producing offense. The pitch way inside, and he hits him, and so Zach Hardy takes first base. That's the second hit batter of this game against Russ Crum, but only the first one to get a base. Yeah, there's no doubt Zach was trying to get out of that, get out of the way of that ball. I really don't even think you should have to make an effort to get out of the way. If I was an ump, anyone that got hit would go. Yeah. You know, unless you're standing on the plate, you're gonna get if you get hit, take your bag. I don't think it's the responsibility of the batter to get out of the way. I think it's the responsibility of the pitcher not to hit him. Unless he's unless he's crowding the plate. Right. So Patrick Chesley on a courtesy run for Hardy, and now Kyle Williams, who popped up to third, his first time up will be the batter. So Kyle Williams now steps in with one out here in the top half of the third inning. Hurricanes looking for a little insurance as Williams calls time and steps out of the box. Again, you're listening to WBHF AM 1450. We'd like to thank our sponsors for today's game, U.S. Industrial Supply and Bill Green. The first pitch there misses away. 1-0 now to Kyle Williams. He's a longtime supporter of Hurricane Baseball and he's probably out watching the game today. And if not, I know he's listening to it. So thank you for your sponsorship of Hurricane Baseball. Also, I'd like to thank Parmenter, Lankford, and Watkins Insurance and Scott Parmenter and Guy Parmenter who have graciously sponsored this series. That one in there for a called strike, a one and one Kyle Williams steps back in. We'd also like to thank the Bartow County Animal Hospital with Drs. Andy Tripp and Dwayne Montgomery, who have graciously sponsored this series as well. And that ball is going to get away from the catcher, and Patrick Chesley takes second. So now the Hurricanes have a runner in scoring position for Kyle Williams and only one out in the count now, two and one. We'd also like to thank Sam Smith at Century Bank for his sponsorship of the series and Gary Fox at Bartow County Bank. Our radio sponsors for today are the, the group we just mentioned, plus the Capri Restaurant and the Village Porch Cafe. Kyle Williams stepping in. The count two and one. That ball laced back to the pitcher. It goes off his glove. It gets lost on the mound. He doesn't get it in time, and Kyle Williams is safe. What an excellent effort, and you see the speeds of him on the base path as he gets down the line, and the Hurricanes now have runners aboard on first and second, and a tough break that time for Russ Crump. I'm going to appoint you the official score. Is that he an won. error? Or he, he's got to go E1. Okay. Because he had a chance. He could have come back even though right. That's it, true. it dropped right in front of him. And he had to pick it up, and he didn't pick it up. So Kyle Williams reaches on the air. And now you don't often see an error on the pitcher, but I think that's one. I agree. Jason Ritchie now steps in. If he'd hit it and it, and it shot off him. Right. Then it's a different story. It's a different but story, but it dropped right in front of him. Yeah. Oh, and he would have thrown him out had he picked it up. The pitch. That one swung on, hit down the third base line and foul, and the count goes 0-1 to Jason Ritchie. So we'll see if Ritchie can get another hit. Doubled and scored. 
last inning. Big leadoff double for Cartersville back in the second. His first hit of the series. So now Jason Ritchie steps back in. Russ Crum checks his runners, and that one misses inside. One and one to Ritchie. One out here in the top half of the third inning. Hurricanes threatening. Jason Ritchie up, and if he gets on, Alan Barnes would follow in the nine spot. And then we'll be back to the top of the order. The pitch. That one misses outside. Two and one now to Ritchie. Good job by Ritchie to look at a couple off-speed pitches, and now he can look for one that he likes ahead two and one. Hitters count. As Chesley takes his lead off second and Williams at first. The pitch swung on. That ball taken to the opposite field. It's going back toward the fence. That ball near the wall, and it's caught that time by Brad Woodard, but the runners will advance. So a sacrifice fly for Jason Ritchie, and the Hurricanes are in business now with two outs. They've got two in scoring position, and they bring the DH Allen Barnes to the plate. Wow, that's a great catch, though, that time by Brad Woodard, Scott. Running over by the line. I don't think he's going to get to that, so that's a very good play defensively by Woodard. And it, the Panthers would have been in deep trouble. They're going to appeal and say that Kyle Williams left first, but there's no way that he left early. They're going to say he did. And they're going to say he did. Wow. I, that, that's a bad call, Scott, and we'll talk about it next inning, but I, I watched Kyle Williams. He was definitely on the bag when that ball was caught, so that will end the inning for Cartersville. Well, that'll do it for the Canes here. They were threatening in the top of the third. They come away with nothing. We move to the bottom half of the third inning. It's now Cartersville 4, Perry nothing. And hey, welcome back to Richard Bellfield. You're watching the high school baseball game of the week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. Kyle Tucker along with Scott Singer. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. Cartersville leads Perry four to nothing. Perry has their seventh hitter in the order up. That's Doug Yarbo. He is the first pitch out to short at Kyle Williams. Kyle makes the pick up on one hop. Throw to Matt Price in time. Quickly one down here in the bottom of the third. Great play defensively that time for the Canes. And Kyle Williams just kind of gets over there and feels it. And, you know, that's a place he'll be playing again next year. So Woodard will step up, the right fielder. Made a great catch there to really end the inning. He watches a fastball from Mitchell. We'll get back to that. If you're a little confused how that last inning ended, Carswell had runners on first and second with one out. Jason Ritchie gets a ball deep to the wall and right as he'll watch the pitch from Mitchell. That one miss, also misses up. Right fielder Woodard makes a great catch over by the line. He takes two steps. The runners then tag after the ball has hit his glove. So runners go to second and third. As again, we'll watch the 2-0 from Mitchell. That one's in on the outside corner. It's 2-1. and one. Perry appeals the call saying that Kyle Williams left first early, and the umpire called him out. But not a call that I would agree with. I agree with that you, Kyle. I don't, I don't think he was there. Well, I'll go back and check it on the TV and see what. There we go. And give you an official update if we were right or wrong. Fastball from Mitchell was in, so it was two and two. That one's fouled back. Count remains the same. That time Mitchell starts to hit a little velocity, throws it 89 miles an hour that time. Two and two the count. So Mitchell gets a sign from Hardy and delivers the two two. Nearly hits the Batter Yarbrough, so count will now be e or full, excuse me, three and two. Kind of came a little bit inside on him that time, Kyle, and lucky he didn't hit him, but still stays alive. This time the full count pitch is fouled away to the left side, so we'll do it again. And Russ has faced the minimum so far. He's allowed two hits, but they one has been erased on a pickoff, and the other was erased on a double play. This time the 3-2 pitch is popped up to the left side. Underneath it, Kyle Williams, he's in fair territory. He makes the grab. So there's quickly two down here in the bottom of the third. And that brings up Mitchell Fowler. Hitting out of the ninth spot now. Kyle back in the last game. He actually came away with a big hit late in that one. Kept Perry's hopes alive. Yes, he did. Hit the ball hard twice. Lined out to first and then had that single. And 
and we're going to have some lightning. So we're going to be in a delay. So we will be in a lightning delay. It will probably be 20 minutes at least. And you're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Weekend, listening to WBHF AM 1450. We'll take a quick break and come back right after this. For our radio listeners, we will send you back to the studio where they will have some news and music for you, and we will let you know when this one comes full again. It is a uh, probably a 20-minute lightning delay before we can get anything back going, and we will see what happens. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back after our lightning delays. You can see here at Richard Bell Field, the sun is now out, and we're playing ball again. Russ Mitchell delivers a fastball. That will end the inning. He walked the first batter after the lay and now strikes out McCarty. So we're going to the top of the fourth. Cartersville, four, and Perry, nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Adelphia Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week, and you're listening to WBHF AM 1450. We now move to the top half of the fourth inning, and the Hurricane Bats will come to the plate. Set to lead things off for the Hurricanes here will be Alan Barnes. He'll be followed by Matt Hightower and Russ Mitchell. The Hurricanes with a an rather unorthodox ending to their last inning when Kyle Williams was called out for leaving early on the tag, and... We'll have to go back and review the tape and see if he, in fact, did. But home plate umpires seem to think, no, it didn't happen. And then, <laughs> then he's like, all right, I'll give you an appeal if you want one. And well, just, then, just to give a quick idea, three people I talked to during the break all agreed with me. And, of course, now they are looking through the purple tinted glasses mm -hmm. now. But they all said there was no question that Kyle Williams was on the back when he caught the ball. I agree wholeheartedly. I believe you agreed with me too, Scott. Quickly, let's just update that the way that last inning ended. I know it came back kind of quickly after the break. Mitchell Fadler was actually at the plate when the lightning bolt struck, or I guess it never really struck. It was seen off in the distance, which made the, te which made the teams leave the field. So after, I'm guessing, you no know, 15, 20-minute delay, Fadler came back up. He was walked, and then Russ Mitchell struck out the leadoff man Kyle McCarty on three straight pitches, got him looking, and so now, like Scott said, we go to the top of the fourth. And here is Scott. Thanks a lot, Kyle. And we move to the top half of the fourth. Alan Barnes set to lead things off for the Hurricanes. He's 0 for 1 today here in game number two. He flew out to left field back in his first at bat. We'll see what he can do here against Russ Crum. The stretch and the pitch. That one in there for a called strike. 0 and 1 to Allen Barnes. Be interesting to see, Scott, how each pitcher responds to the delay. A little time to get that arm cold. Hard to get it back going again. Crum with the stretch and the pitch. Swung on that ball, hit right back to the pitcher. Crum fields it, throws on to first in time. That one goes 1-3, and that brings the top of the order to the plate for the Hurricanes. Matt Hightower steps in. Scott, like you said, the top of the order, he is one for two. He's homered, but he has scored twice. He struck out in the first, but reached when the catcher, Tyler Lawhorn, was unable to hold on to the ball. And then he scored on the Josh Morris home run. Hightower, the winning pitcher in game one. Only gave up four hits, three runs, one of which was earned. So a, another solid performance by Hightower. He's now 4-0 in the postseason. The stretch and the pitch. That one misses away, 1-0. So Matt Hightower steps back in. Crum with the stretch and the pitch. Swung on. That ball taken towards center field. It's going to stay in the park. T.J. Hudgens going back. And makes the easy out, and it's two up, two down for the Canes here in the fourth. And that brings Russ Mitchell to the plate. Mitchell stepping in with two down and nobody on. Again, we're in the top half of the fourth inning, and you're listening to WBHF AM 1450. You're also watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. Russ Mitchell stepping in now to face Russ Krim. Krim up on the hill again, gets the sign from Tyler Lawhorn. The stretch. The pitch swung on, and that ball ripped into left field. It's down for a base hit, and Mitchell is aboard, and that brings the big stick of Josh Morris to the plate as Mitchell tries to take two, and great he slides hustle. in for a double, and a great hustle play that time by Russ Mitchell, who just kind of caught the Perry defense napping. 
tremendous hustle. I already written down single in the scorebook, and next time, thing I know, I look up and Russ is sliding in head first into second with a double, and that is very important because that puts him in scoring position with Josh Morris. So Morris will now step in with two down here in the top half of the fourth inning, and as you said, a runner in scoring position as Mitchell takes the lead off second, and oh. now they're going to throw the intentional walk to Josh Morris, and that now brings Matt Price to the plate. Yeah, I was going to say the only potential downfall of Mitchell hustling into second is that leaves first base open, and there's no chance that they're going to pitch to Josh Morris with two outs and first base open. So they walk him intentionally, and that brings up Matt Price. So Josh Morris catches the intentional base on balls, and now Matt Price steps in, who's 0 for 2 today here in game number two. But again, Price has power and had a big hit in game number one. Very big hit, two-run homer. Two Means run one run that two. was the difference in that game. So led to almost half the scoring. Leads to, leads to 40 percent of the scoring in game number one. And really, you got to almost say is one could have been the MVP of game one. Yeah, made a nice defensive play over at first, snagged a line drive. And if he can find a little ride right here, the Hurricanes could gain a little insurance with a runner in scoring position if he could get one through. Russ Crumb back up on the hill to pitch. That one misses high, 1-0 and now to Matt Price. If he gets aboard, Zach Kiesler would be next with two down here in the top half of the fourth inning. The Hurricane runners take their leads. Crumb checks his runner, the pitch. That one misses outside, 2-0. and Scott, the runner at second is Travis Henderson. He's in as a courtesy runner for Mitchell, the pitcher. And Morris... Cores down at first after the intentional walk. That one a swing and a miss that time, and the count goes to two and one. Price took a home run cut right there, came up empty. Price will step back in. Two and one the count. Runners again aboard on first and second, the pitch. That one in there for a called strike. They throw back to second, and the runner is safe. Travis Henderson with a good job of getting back to the bag. And the count is now even at two now for Matt Price. Matt didn't like that call too much from the home plate umpire, but not much you can do about it now. Matt has to step back in there. It's two and two. So Matt Price steps back in to face Russ Crump. Two and two the count with two down here in the top of the fourth inning, and time is called. The Matt, pitcher Crump no. took, a, took a step off the rubber. I was going to say, Scott, Matt struck out in the first and then flied out to left in the second. And like you said, a, a very big home run in the first game. And the red-hot Zach Kiesler waits on deck. He would bat should Price reach. So Price steps back in. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Swing and a miss is a drop three strike. They'll have to throw him out, and they will. And that will do it for the Hurricanes here in the fourth. They get it done off a hit, a walk. They strand two. We move to the bottom half of the inning. It's still Cartersville four, Perry nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. And the leadoff hitter here in the fourth inning for Perry gets on with a rough play up the middle that time. It'll be an error on Kyle Williams at short. The batter was TJ Hudgens, and he now gives the Panthers a little life. Yeah, Panthers need base runners, Scott, down by four here in the fourth. And they get their leadoff man on in Hutchins. Tough play by Kyle Williams. Ball's hit back up the middle. But I'm sure Kyle will tell you that's a ball he should have gloved and made the play on. So now that brings Chris Fry to the plate with a runner aboard. And he rips one back to the pitcher. He throws on to second, back on to first. And the Canes turn their second 1-6-3 double play of the game. That's beautiful defense right there. One hopper right back to Russ Mitchell. He does a good job. Kyle Williams is not at the bag, so he doesn't panic. Waits, leads him like a quarterback would lead a wide receiver in football, and Williams makes the catch at the bag. Throws on to Matt Price in plenty of time. Like you said, the second 1-6-3 double play of the game. I can guarantee you there are many high school teams that go a whole year without turning two 1-6-3 double plays. Canes have done it twice in four innings. Russ Crum now at the plate. 
Hits the first pitch right to Adam McGowan. He fields it, throws on to first in time. It goes 4-3, and we've got four innings in the books. We come back with the top of the fifth. You're listening to WBHF and watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. It's Cartersville 4, Perry nothing. Welcome back. You're listening to WBHF and watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week as we now move to the top half of the fifth inning. And the Hurricane Bats will try to get something going as they'll look for a little insurance. Zach Kiesler, Zach Hardy, and Kyle Williams will come to the plate for the Canes. Oh. It's got a big night here at the ballpark. Obviously for the Hurricanes, they're three innings away from going back to the state championship series. But a big day tomorrow for a couple of Hurricanes is the Major League Baseball draft is tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. A couple potential draftees here at Cartersville, three in the county, including Dustin Evans up at Adairsville. So some anxious moments and exciting time for a lot of amateur baseball players, not only here in Bartow County, but across the country. And there's also two other guys that are hoping something will happen today that are Bartow County guys that, right. are, that are at the collegiate, collegiate level. level. Exactly Lee right. Lee Mitchell and Justin McLean will be looking for yep. something to happen as well. So Zach Kiesler set to lead things off in the first pitch low and inside, a 1-0 to him to lead off the top of the fifth inning. Kane's, of course, the visiting team here in game number two of this best of three set. That's just the way the, the state makes it. I like that. Kiesler steps back in. 1-0 pitch on the way. That one high and away, 2-0. That's how they'll do it this weekend in the – College Super Regional, 16 teams remain after regional play this week, and Scott and I were 0 for 2 on the weekend. Yeah, the Gators and the Tigers are both going home. Throw in David here with us for 0 for 3. <laughs> <laughs> David and I thought one of our teams would be going in Clemson and Auburn, and they were both bounced out of that regional. Ohio State won. Kiesler steps back in. 2-1 pitch on the way. Swung on, and that ball ripped toward left field, going back toward the fence, and... Making the play right along the warning track is Mitchell Fowler. Wow, Scott, I was ready to call that ball out of here, but if you look at the flags right above Fowler, they're blowing towards right field, and that definitely kept that ball in its ballpark. Keesler crushed it, but got it up there in the jet stream, and if you look at the American flag out in center field, it's blowing pretty hard in. So that's the only way that ball stayed in the ballpark. Tough break for Keesler. Just missed his second home run of this series. So that brings Zach Hardy to the plate as Hardy will step in with no one on and an out. The pitch. That one misses away. 1 0. Zach Hardy steps back out, gets the sign, and now steps back in the box. 1 0. The pitch. That one in there for a call and strike. 1 and 1. Zach has been on base every time he's come to the plate in this series, except for one time. He flew out to right in game one. The pitch. Swung on, and that ball ripped toward left field. It's going back toward the fence. That's going to stay in the park. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Hardy will round first, headed for second, and he's in with a stand-up double. Good job of hitting by Zach Hardy. He laced that all-speed delivery from Crum into the gap. In left center, T.J. Hutchins, the center fielder, got closer to that ball than I thought he would. He made a diving effort but was unable to come up with it. Patrick Chesley <laughs> has been on base, it seems like, all day. Hardy's been on base all day, and Chesley comes in to run for him. And Kyle Williams will step up to the plate with one out here in the fifth. Canes by four, looking to add to their lead. Russ Mitchell is cruising right along on the mound thus far. Hopefully he'll be able to continue to do so. Canes inch closer to another state championship series berth. Kyle Williams steps back in with a runner in scoring position and one out here in the top of the fifth inning. The pitch, that one misses away, one to to Williams. Up next for the Canes will be Jason Ritchie. He's hit the ball well. Thought he had left the yard last at bat, but. I don't know what it is about Ritchie, right Scott. Is this whole playoffs, he's hit the ball so well, if, if and you, a guy will make a defensive play like they just did on him. If you move these fences in about five feet, Jason Ritchie would be leading the country in home runs. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that one in there for a called strike to Kyle Williams, two and one. Another runner in scoring position. Canes don't want to leave that one out there. Five-run lead 
obviously a lot better for than a four-run lead for a couple of reasons. Of course, you want to score as many runs as you can, but with a four-run lead, it's like we what the, we like to call sometimes a one-swing lead. You load the bases and bam, one swing, a grand slam ties it. If you're up by five, a grand slam obviously cannot tie it. Pitch to Kyle Williams is fouled back to the stop on a 3-1 count, and even that runs it full. So a full count now for Kyle Williams. Three and two the call as Williams will step back in with one out here in the fifth inning. Williams trying to find something here. Crum with the pitch. That ball hit down the second baseline. Coming on to make the play that time is Kyle McCarty, and he gets there in time with the putout. Good effort by Kyle Williams and a good job by Kyle McCarty to not give up on it. McCarty bobbled it out there at second and made a good play. Nice throw into first. Barely got the diving Kyle Williams. But it does sacrifice the, the runner over to third, so Patrick Chesley, who is coming to run for Hardy, is now 90 feet away from giving the Canes a little insurance. And if Jason Ritchie can step up and... One time, i just like to see Jason. He already has a double in this game, of a very big double. That pitch is hit into right field. It's going back toward the fence. It's in foul territory, and it's going to be fouled just by about a foot on the line. It looked like it was coming back in, but... Good effort by Brad Woodard, the right fielder. Just one time, can, I, can we see Jason hit a ball hard and be rewarded for it? He has been robbed more than anybody I've seen. And now this is the eighth playoff game for Cartersville. Just running into bad luck. Nothing that he's doing wrong. It, just, it happens as a hitter. So Richie will step out of the box, look down the line, and now step back in. One thing you always count on out of Jason, those guys, he will play solid defense for you. You can stick him really in any of the three outfield spots, and he's going to do a good job. Now he steps back in. Again with a runner 90 feet away and two outs. That pitch misses away, 1-0. I guess he has played all three spots here in the playoffs. Usually plays right when Hightower pitches, center when Morris pitches. And then when Hightower goes to right, he goes to left. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Uh, swing and a miss that time, 1-2. and two. So a very versatile player up at the plate for the Canes. Jason Ritchie steps out of the box, looks down the line, and now steps back in. Again, we're in the top half of the fifth inning, the Hurricanes. With a comfortable 4-0 lead at this point. They're nine outs away from punching their ticket back to the state final. The pitch swung on, and that ball hit to the opposite field. It's going back toward the fence. And catching it along the warning track that time was Brad Woodard, and that'll do it for the Canes here in the fifth inning. They threaten with a hit, and they strand him. We move to the bottom half of the inning. Cartersville four, Perry nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. We move to the bottom half of the fifth inning and set to lead things off is Matt Hunt. as the heart of the lineup up here for the Panthers, and he takes a called strike on the outside corner. Moving into the latter stages of this game, Scott, Perry has not really threatened to score off Russ Mitchell thus far. As we'll watch that pitch miss low and away. And they need to get something started here in a hurry if they want to extend their season. And the, mo the most amazing thing today is we haven't seen Josh Morris piss, pitch, who is their, their number one. The pitch, that one misses outside. That pitch Two barely one. missed. <laughs> We've been talking a long time. <laughs> it happens. We'll forgive you. I hope we don't see that. <laughs> That one in there for a strike two and two. So stepping back in is Matt Hunt. Scott, trust me, I've messed up. <laughs> Last year I said something that was brought to my attention after the game. Way worse than that. That one hit down the line. Coming on to make the play is Kyle Williams, and it bounces off his chest. That goes E6, and Perry has a base runner here to start the fifth. Kyle's having a rough day over there at short. The second error, and hopefully the last time he was bailed out on the double play, and let's and, and he helped convert that double play, so yeah. he kind of got himself out of the right. jam the last time. Let's hope that happens here. I mean, that's a tough play. Ball's sharply hit at him. You're in the hole. He's just worried about getting that ball out of his glove before it actually reached his glove, trying to get it over the first in time. Did a good job of knocking it down, but then it, I guess his shoulders weren't square to it, and it kind of bounced right. off him and shot into the outfield a little bit. So 
nonetheless they have a runner and no outs the pitch that time in there for a called strike to Tyler Lawhorn Lawhorn looks down the third baseline gets the sign and now gets ready to step back in Lawhorn squaring to bunt right there but I really don't know why you would do that down by four you need base runners not outs not they throw on back to the bag and the runner is safe Russ Mitchell with a quick pick over there and almost had him one nothing game yes of course you bunt but not down four like you said Scott you got to have base runners to get back in it and the last thing the Panthers want is someone to get picked off now they bunt one up and Mitchell what a, with a diving snag comes away with the ball what a great effort that time by Russ Mitchell as he lays out for it and makes the out that was a super play and it looks like Scott our bat boy Cal has been substituted for unless he just changed clothes <laughs> I don't know. maybe he's getting ready for his travel attire I don't know <laughs> Oh, That's all right, though. I'm glad he gets to do that. <laughs> Good experience for him. Doug Yarbrough steps in. <laughs> Face Russ Mitchell. One out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning as Yarbrough steps in with a runner aboard. The pitch. Swung on that ball. Hit down the line. It's in for a base hit. And Harry now has two aboard. And things are getting a little interesting as they'll send Brad Woodard to the plate. I think we did get a substitute for Cal. Was he? He was smaller than that, wasn't he? I thought so, but no, hard no. To, it's hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> He's running down the line, Number though. Five, Brad I think we can get a shot of the dugout over there, and we can see if there's another one around. Maybe he's got he's got plans tonight. <laughs> he needs to <laughs> Maybe we're looking for you, Cal. I don't see him in there. <laughs> right here, buddy. Come on now. Good thing he would here. probably be. Hidden behind somebody. Hey, hey, let's go now. Couldn't really tell. I mean, who wouldn't want to go out with, you know, the, the five-year-old that's part of the high school team, man, get in the bat. But he's cleaning up in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Brad Woodard steps in. Runners aboard on first and second now. The 0 one pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the stop again, 0-2. We've had more laughs today, Scott, than we've had the whole season combined. This has been a fun day at the ballpark. Been a nice one. I'm glad the rain stayed away. And now Brad Woodard steps back in. The 0 2 pitch on the way now for Russ Mitchell. He delivers one outside, one and two. First jam that Russ has found himself in today. Two on with one out in the bottom of the fifth. Up four. By no means is this game over. Hurricanes need to get some outs here. Mitchell again with the stretch. The pitch. That one misses away two and two. Hurricane Faithful didn't like that pitch. I don't really know how that one missed there, Scott. Pretty good fastball. Right on the outside part of the plate. Must have been just off the plate. Hardy did a good job of framing it, but it was not called a strike. Mitchell throws back to the bag, and the runner is safe. Coach like Chester made, wanted that call. Looked like he made the tag that time, but we're not on top of it. Woodard steps back in. Runners again on first and second. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on that ball, hit down the first baseline. Great snag by Matt Price. He throws it underhand to Mitchell. He gets the the batter but the lead runners advance and now you've got two in scoring position with two outs and a big at bat now coming for Mitchell Fowler. That's twice that the, the player's most hated drill has come into play. Coach Chester starts every practice by what you call PFP which is called pitcher's fielding practice and it only involves your pitcher really your second baseman is, is kind of in it but it's really just your pitcher and first baseman and they work on that play where Price gets it and tosses it to the pitcher every day. That one misses outside, a 1-0. And, and Price has made two nice plays on it. He did a good job to backhand it. Great toss to Mitchell for the out. That's another play that a lot of high school teams cannot execute. The pitch by Mitchell, that one in there for a called strike, a 1-1. One one. So Mitchell Fowler now steps back in. Mitchell back up on the hill. Gets the sign. That ball swung on and found back to the stop. And the count now goes to one and two. This is a big at bat here. If Mitchell yes. can get him out, he'd then face the top of the order and basically he'd have to go through 
the heart of their lineup one more time to get the victory yeah, here today. Huge at bat because your cars will have a chance to get out of it. Perry a chance with a base hit. You cut the lead in half, so a huge at bat right here. The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he goes down on strikes, chasing a high fastball, and that'll do it. The Panthers threaten here off an error. One hit, they strand two. We move to the top of the sixth inning, and the Canes are six outs away from punching their ticket back to the state finals. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week. The Hurricanes have scored four runs off seven hits. They've committed two errors. For Perry, they have scored no runs. They have three hits, and they have actually committed three errors. The pitch. That one misses low to Allen Barnes, the nine hitter for the Canes. If he's to get aboard, the top of the order would come up for Cartersville. As Barnes leads things off, he'll be followed by Hightower and Mitchell here in the sixth inning. The pitch. A swing, oh, yeah. and he did go around. A one and one. Allen yeah. Barnes chasing a high fastball that time. And yeah, tried to hold back, couldn't quite stop his wrists there. The stretch, the pitch. That one in there for a called strike. A one and two. Top of the six, Canes by four. Like Scott said, looking for some insurance here. The pitch. Swung on, and that ball popped up in the infield. Coming back for it is Crum. He'll get called off by the catcher, and they'll miss it. It's a f They're going to call it foul, but I thought the catcher touched it, Scott. I did, too. Anyway, it's not a good job by the Perry infield of communication. A ball like that right in front of the plate. Hey, let's go. You're the, same team. the third the same baseman team. Let's go. needs to catch that as we see a little arguing going on between the Perry players. But the third baseman that time, that's Hunt's ball. He's coming in on, he has a much better angle than does the catcher Lawhorn. And Alan Barnes has another life. But you can just see the dejection in, in the Panther players right now. They're arguing with each other, and that's about the worst situation a team can ever have. Right. Barnes steps back in. The pitch swung on, and that ball taken toward left field. It's in no man's land right now, and coming back to make the out that time was Chris Fry, the shortstop. And so it's one up, one down for the Canes here in the sixth, and that brings Matt Hightower to the plate. Hightower, one for three today, Scott Homer. Back in the second, out to our friends up there on the Vita course in right center field by the scoreboard. He has scored twice as well for Cartersville. And we get a wave from a fan up there. We appreciate that. Matt Hightower steps in. That one misses away, one and out. One day we should do a game over there. <laughs> yeah, you just can't see the scoreboard. There you oh, go. Okay. He thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll come to got us a fan club. We should go do one. Matt Hightower steps back in. The 1-0 pitch on the way, and that one misses low and away. 2-0 now to Matt Hightower. We don't need a scoreboard, Kyle. We can. You're good enough. You're always right. The scoreboard count is often wrong and you have the correct count it is two and oh right now and it is four to nothing cartersville matt hightower steps in that one in there for a called strike two and one so hightower steps out of the box for a second well the way things are going at this park the past few years just we're gonna have a little time here and, and the park has uh been in the improvements have been made we're gonna have a jumbo trying out there in center before you know it <laughs> <laughs> Replay retractable board. dome for, for <laughs> rain delays. <laughs> Lightning? Okay. We're still playing. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> that would be awesome. I don't know if we the catcher is shaking his wrist, if he might be a little banged up here. That's Lawhorn. Come check on him. Looks like the trainer for Perry comes out, and he's going to be all right. So the count's two and one to Hightower. Well, the problem for, for Perry has been is that Russ Mitchell has shut them down. They have not had any base runners. They've had a hard time getting anything going. Very few base runners, only three hits, one walk. A couple guys reached on an error, but they haven't been able to do anything. And usually when a guy gets on base, there's a swing and a miss that time by Hightower to even the count at two. 
But it seems like every time a Perry player gets on base, Kyle, they, they either get picked off or they somebody rolls one into a, a double play. So the 2-2 pitch to Matt Hightower is chopped up the middle. On comes Kyle McCarty. He gloves it, makes a nice throw to first, and they're going to call him out. Matt Hightower upset with that one, but it's a nice play by the second baseman. Kyle McCarty up the middle, gloves it, and makes a good throw on to Doug Yarbrough for the second out here in the sixth, and that brings up Russ Mitchell. Russ one for three here in game two. Scott said he's pitching a nice game on the mound here for the Canes. He doubled back in the fourth. Two outs and nobody on. Russ Crum looks in for the sign from Tyler Lawhorn. The first pitch to Mitchell misses in. 1 0. Mitchell takes a quick glance at Coach Chester and he's back ready for the second pitch. Crum delivers. Hangs a breaking pitch, but it comes down over the plate for a strike. And it counts even at one. Josh Moore's awaits on deck. He would bat if Mitchell can reach. 1-1 one, one pitch to Mitchell. That ball is hit down third base line. Foul. So Mitchell just barely missed his second double of the game. Looked like he might have gotten on that other side of that third base back, but can't really tell from here. We'll trust the third base umpire. So Mitchell is behind one and two. Already here in the top of the sixth of game two. One, two to Mitchell. Chases a high, hard one, and that will do it for Cartersville. Nothing across for the Canes in the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Cartersville still leads Perry four to nothing. And welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. We have a score from South Georgia down at LaGrange. The Grangers have lost game one, seven to six to Dublin as leading things off here in the sixth inning that time was number three, Kyle McCarty, as he hits one into left field. That ball in for a base hit. And just like that, Perry has a base runner. It's a very critical inning here in the game. Probably the determining determining inning in the baseball game. Perry sitting up the top of their order. They trail by four. Leadoff man gets on with a base hit. And if you're going to do any damage against Mitchell, there's a good time to do it. Nobody out, a runner on, and that pitch misses inside, 1 0. Mitchell so, wanted that one. Look back at the home plate umpire, but it's 1 0. TJ Hudgens now steps back in. Mitchell back up on the hill. The runner at first, Kyle McCarty, takes a lead. And Mitchell goes back to the bag, trying to get him. Even though Mitchell's right-handed, you better not take a big lead at first. He will pick you off. Hudgens steps back in the pitch. He bunts that one down. Mitchell comes up throwing, fires it on to first in time. They get the force out there. And at this point, Cartersville can we'll gladly take that. bases for outs. Oh, I cannot believe they're trying to bunt. Down four in the sixth. But. Perry has a runner in scoring position, but I really don't know why you would have your second man in the order bunting there. And it wasn't like he was bunting for a hit. That was a straight sacrifice. But it does move the runner to scoring position. That brings up Chris Fry. The pitch. That one in there for a called strike, 0 and 1. So Chris Fry will step in. The 0 1 count. Mitchell checks his runner, the pitch. That one swung on, hit into the infield. Coming on to make the play is Kyle Williams. Throws on to first in time. Now the runner is going to be him. thrown out at second. What a great play defensively by the Canes in the field as Adam McCallan gets the foot out, and that'll do it for Perry here in the sixth. We head to the seventh. It's Cartersville four, Perry nothing. Welcome back to Richard Bell Field. You're watching the high school baseball game of the week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. 
Four runs, seven hits, and two errors for the Hurricanes. No runs, four hits, and three errors for the Panthers. So there's your story here from the ballpark. We go to the top of the seventh. Cartersville leads it four to nothing. One inning away from going back to the state championship series. They have been there each of the past two years, and they have won each of the past two years. Trying to win their 28th consecutive state playoff game. And the leader off here in the seventh is Josh Morris. Morris steps in to lead things off, Kyle. And a big opportunity here to get a little insurance. And they may have just, with the defensive play in the other half of the inning, may have uh, deflated any hopes of a comeback for Perry. And if you look down the line at their bench right now, a lot of heads down. Yeah, I think they kind of realized that was their chance. Bad base running has caused Perry all day long. Morris takes one, and he rips that deep to left field, Kyle. If that's fair, there is no doubt. And it is gone. That one's still on the way down as it just lands into the trees here at Richard Bell Field. Okay. And it was only a matter of time before Morris would get a hold of one. His second long ball here in game number two, and the hurricane warning siren is out, and the Canes are about ready to mail this one in. And you see a smile out of Josh Morris. Good to see it. He keeps such a you know, calm demeanor out on the field. You can never tell if he's up or he's down, but I'm glad to see him smile there. He's hit two home runs. Why wouldn't you smile? The Canes have scored 10 runs between the two games today. They've all come on long balls. And when you say when you hit a long ball in high school baseball, it's not always that impressive. It is on this field. This is one of the bigger fields you're going to see a high school baseball team play on. It's 331 down the lines, 355 to the alleys, 385 to straightaway center. A swing and a miss that time to Matt Price, and the count goes 0-1. Price trying to join the home run club there. He took a hack, Scott. That ball was in his eyes. Matt Price steps back in the pitch. A swing and a miss, and he fouls that one back. Gets away from it. It's him. hard as a hitter, and, and I, I'm, I'm speaking on what I hear from other guys because I, I never was a power hitter, obviously, but you hit three, four, or five, and you see your buddy ahead of you go deep, and <laughs> deep that ball was. <laughs> your eyes light up, too. <laughs> You're like, man, <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Give me one right there, please. 0-2 the count, the stretch, and the pitch. Swung on, and that ball taken into center field. It's going to be in short center. Coming on to make the play is Hudgens. And he camps underneath that one and makes the out. So the first out of the inning in the books here in the seventh. Cuttersville now leading it 5 to nothing after the little insurance bomb by Josh Morris, his second of the game. And Cuttersville with a commanding 5 nothing lead. And now Zach Kiesler steps in the box. Cuttersville trying to repeat. Actually, three-peat this year. They could be one of only nine schools in the history of the state to do that at any classification. And we have to do some research to find this out. Maybe you would know, Scott, but I don't think too many teams have won it in one classification, bumped up the next, and then won it in that one as well. Pretty impressive what Cartersville has been able to do. Obviously has not won the AAA. That's be a very tough task against either Dublin or LaGrange, but just to have the opportunity to do that is very impressive. That one in there for a called strike. A one and one. You asked that question, and I have that information. All right. Kiesler watches a ball in the dirt. It's two and one. Zach Hardy awaits on deck. Zach Hardy, or Zach Kiesler steps back in. The pitch. That one misses away. Three and one now. So Kiesler can sit dead right here and look for one he likes. Pepperell has won it in two different classifications. Pepperell won it in 1954 in Class B, whatever in the world that is, and then, and then they won it again in Class A in 1957, but they was not back-to-back -back years. They right. I'll see if I can find somebody else. And there's a walk to Zach Kiesler as he takes his bag, and the Hurricanes have a base runner with one out here in the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Singer is the man pulling out state champions from the mid-50s. I love it. You, you cannot stump him. <laughs> I thought I'd finally got him. He said, hold on. I have it right here. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, when, I, when I'm counting the back-to-back -back te or teams that have done it three times, I'm only counting them once. If you won like five in a row, you only get, I'm only giving you credit three times. Right. If you could te technically say 
there's a couple guys in here that have won it, you know, a bunch of times in a row. And um, like Richmond Academy from 1951 to 1956 won it six times. I'm not giving them credit for four. Well, you just you just ruined my night telling me that. My roommate at school was from Richmond Academy, and I told him there's no way they've won more state baseball championships <laughs> than we have. And <laughs> well, there we go. But he will not know that. <laughs> There's a miss outside. 2-0 oh now to Zach Hardy. Marist won it three times in a row, 1983 to 85. The most recent three-peat was Gainesville. There they throw back to the bag. And still a 2-0 -oh count now to Zach Hardy. So Hardy hits with Kiesler at first and Kyle Williams on deck. One out here in the seventh, one run already across. Cartersville five to nothing over Perry. Hardy fouls one straight back. And the count's gonna go three one to Hardy as he'll trot down to have a little talk with Coach Chester. Coach Chester gave him the green light there, three oh, which I like to see. You're up five. You got a power hitter up there in Hardy. If he sees one he likes, why not try and park one? Like Scott said earlier. Every Carsville run today has come via the long ball. Five total home runs have been hit for the Hurricanes today to produce ten total runs in the two games. Perry's still looking for their first run here in game two, and that ball is high to Hardy. He will trot down to first with a walk. So Hardy has been on base, it seems, all day. Now the Canes have a runner in scoring position for Kyle Williams, and things are starting to get a little interesting again. As I was saying, the most recent three-peat team was Gainesville between 96 and 98. That was a pretty good team. That was <laughs> yeah. back when they had uh, Victor Minical and uh, Hushin that pitched yeah. at Georgia. Mike Hushin and um, Come on, bro. they were just so Jody good. Jody Davis and Blake Davis. Blake Davis yeah. and they, they had some good players on that team. Then Columbus won it three times in a row in 94 through 96. Pace Academy won it 93 through 95. The Lovett School's won it a bunch of times, but they have not three-peated recently. They throw over to first. Patrick Chesley again in to run for Hardy. Lovett has won it in two classifications as well. They've won it in single A and double A. As has Westminster. That pitch to Williams is hit up the middle. That's through for a base hit. Around third, Keesler. The throw is going to come to the plate, but it's not going to be in time. Over to third goes Chesley, so give Kyle Williams a big RBI single. And the Canes now lead it 6 to nothing. So a 6 nothing lead here in the top of the seventh, and the Canes with an opportunity to kind of pour it on here with one out and give Perry something to think about on the ride home. Yeah, like I never like to call it over in baseball, but the way Russ Mitchell's been throwing today, you score six off him in one inning, you're, you're doing something special. And now's a good time for Jason Ritchie. I keep going back to it. Just hit it hard, Jason. Please let it fall for him. Even one of those deep fly balls will at least give him a sack fly and an RBI. So he'll call time here. He has hit the ball. His last, he doubled his first time up and has hit the ball to the fence in right field each of his last two times to the plate. First pitch to him is grounded right at the second baseman. That ball takes a high hop. They'll try to go into first to get the double play. Not in time, so give Jason Ritchie some credit there. He is going to get an RBI on the fielder's choice. And that makes it now seven to nothing. And that brings the bat of Alan Barnes up. And again, he's also due going 0 for 3 today. So Kane's now up seven to nothing. Last two runs. The first two they've scored today without having to use a home run. And Barnes, like you said, Scott Dew, has just missed a couple of pitches today. That one misses outside, and now they'll throw on down to second, and the runner is safe. Great move that time by Jason Ritchie to get down the line. Great hustle. You see his speed there. Now the Canes have a runner in scoring position with two outs for Allen Barnes. A three-peat has happened nine times. Cartersville, would, if they can do it, would be the tenth team to ever do it. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, they would be the eleventh team to ever do it. But Americus has done it twice. So there's one more on my list. I was missing Pepperell back in the 50s. 
So Richmond Academy won six in a row from 51 to 56 in double A. In single A, Americus won it three times in 53 to 55. Pepperell won it 52 to 54. That one misses away. Three and one now to Allen Barnes. Americus won it again in 64 to 66. Marist won it in 83 to 85. Evans is the only team to ever win it in the highest classification three times. Another swing and a miss now to Allen Barnes. Two and two the count. Columbus and Greenbrier both did it between 94 and 96. Columbus won three, then Greenbrier won it 97 to 99. They won three. Gainesville did it 96 to 98. Pace Academy did it 93 to 95. And there's a called strike on Allen Barnes, and that'll do it for the Hurricanes here in the seventh, Kyle, but they get it done big. They come up with two walks, three hits, they score three runs, and they have a commanding 7-0 lead, and they are now three outs away from punching their ticket back to the state finals. outs away from the state championship series are the Cartersville Purple Hurricanes. You're watching the high school baseball game of the week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. We go to the bottom of the seventh. First pitch from Russ Mitchell is hit to Zach Keesler. He makes a good play on to Matt Price in time and that will retire Russ Crumb. So as quickly as, as I could get it out that we're in the bottom of the seventh, there's one out. Russ Mitchell throwing the ground ball to Crumb right there. Canes two outs away from their 28th straight playoff victory. Canes just scored three in the top of the seventh to break up what was still a, a possible game for Perry to win. Obviously, they, they could still win it with eight here, but it'd be hard to do against Russ Mitchell. That pitch misses away on the slider from Mitchell. Canes with two in each of the first two innings and then three last inning. That is going to be a surely, I was going to say surely a call strike, but the first base umpire says he didn't go. I thought that Matt Hunt fell down. I really thought his bat broke the plate right there for a strike, but um, first base umpire said no. So Mitchell will deliver a 2-0 pitch. That ball is popped up into left center field, hit fairly deep. Josh Moores has a beat on it, though, and he makes the catch easily. And now the Hurricane crowd will get on their feet as they are one out away from going back to the state championship series for the third consecutive year. And now they're going to come in and pinch it, Kyle. That was going to be number 33. So they're going to put their season in the hands of number 33, Morris Johnson, who will hit for Tyler Lawhorn. And what a game Russ Mitchell has pitched. Shut out so far over six and two thirds. Really has kept Perry silent offensively. Cartersville looking for their 27th win of the year. And Russ Mitchell with an opportunity to get it right here. First pitch in there for a call strike, 0 and 1 to Johnson. Tough spot for Johnson to come in. He's been on the bench all day, and now all of a sudden, like you said, Scott, your season has one out left in it. You don't want to be the man to make that out. And that one misses away, 1 and 1. So the count even now for Morris Johnson. Mitchell again back up on the hill. Gets the sign, the pitch. That one in there for a called strike, one and two. So Morris Johnson getting ready to step back in. Russ Mitchell could seal their fate right now and punch the Canes ticket back to the state championship. The windup, the pitch. It's on its way, a swing and a miss, and the Hurricanes are going to play for three. They are on their way back to the state championship series where they will defend their title against the winner of the other series between Dublin and LaGrange as the Hurricanes have swept this series in two with a 7-0 victory in game number two as they celebrate on their diamond. And we will take a quick break as they shake hands and we'll be right back after this. You're watching the Channel 4 High School Baseball Game of the Week and listening to WBHF AM 1450. Welcome back to Richard Bell Field. As you see, the Carswell coaching staff confers with the Perry coaching staff. Carswell has won this best of three series, two games to none. They win the first game five to three, and the second one seven to nothing. As Scott said just a second ago, Canes are 
Going to try for three straight state championships. They will defend their title on most likely Friday afternoon. Whichever day we do play, it will be right here at the ballpark. Richard Belt Field against either LaGrange or Dublin. Canes have now won 28 consecutive state playoff baseball games, and that is unheard of. What a mark that is. That's one that will more than likely never be reached as good as baseball competition is becoming across this state, Scott, and I will throw it back to you for our final stats. Well, thanks a lot, Kyle. We take a look at the final numbers in this game. Getting the win on the hill in game number two was Russ Mitchell. He goes the distance, allowing only four hits, no runs, one walk, and he struck out four. Taking the loss in this one was Russ Crum. He worked six or seven innings, allowing ten hits, seven runs, six of them were earned. He had two walks, and he struck out five. At the plate for the visiting Panthers, Kyle McCarty was two for three. T.J. Hutchins was 0 for three, reached base on an error. Kyle Fry was 0 for three. Russ Crum was 0 for three. Matt Hunt was 1 for three, reaching base on an error. Tyler Lawhorn was 0 for two. Morris Johnson 0 for one. Doug Yarborough 1 for two. Brad Woodard 0 for two. And Michael Fowler I'm sorry, Mitchell Fowler, 0 for 1 with a walk. For Cartersville, Matt Hightower was 1 for 4, reaching base on an error. Russ Mitchell was 1 for 4 with a double. Josh Morris was a perfect 3 for 3 with two home runs, a double, and a walk. He scored twice. Matt Price was 0 for 4. Zach Kiesler was 1 for 3 with a walk. Zach Hardy was 1 for 2. He was hit by a pitch. He walked. He had a double, and he reached base on an error and scored a run. Kyle Williams was 1 for 4. He also reached base on an error and had a run batted in. Jason Ritchie was 1 for 4 with a double. He also drove in a run. And Alan Barnes was 0 for 4 in the Hurricane win. With the victory, the Canes now improve to 27 and 4. With the loss, Perry drops to 25 and 9 on the year as their season comes to an end. And Cartersville will be home here for the state championship this weekend as they'll host the winner of Dublin and LaGrange. That series right now is in the hands of Dublin as they won the first game 7 to 6 in that one. And we'll let you know as soon as those scores become available. I'd like to thank the crew for tonight's game. Up on the top camera was David Archer Jr. tonight, Michelle Coleman around here, Eric Shields helping out, and Johnny Jones along with Brandon Brantley in the truck. They did a sensational job on the cameras tonight. I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors for tonight's contest, and we will see you again next week at the state championship. I'm Scott Singer, and Scott, along with Kyle Tucker, saying good night from Richard Belfield. We'll see you this weekend as the Hurricanes play for three.